Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Today is Friday, the 29th day of July 2022, and in this video I am going to share the result of my trip on July 22nd and 23rd to the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society dark site at Blue Canyon Airport near uh, Nyack, California. I'm also going to share um, how many lights I took, what I did for calibration frames as well. So let's uh, see if we can advance this. So basically here's my current gear uh, that's operational and which I use to capture the um, image of IC1396 Elephant Trunks Nebula. Again, key components are my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount and my William Optics Zenith Star 61 Mod 2 along with my ASI 294mm Pro monochrome camera and then I used my Antalya three nanometer narrowband filters. Actually, um, I also did uh, use uh, S2 filter as well. So I just kind of throw that out there to document uh, what my current kit is for this image. Now, Blue Canyon Airport is a Bortle 3 plus site. I captured some readings with my new handheld sky quality meter and it uh, it it's a good dark site uh, it, it returned uh, good numbers that puts it clearly in the uh, uh, Bortle uh, 3 plus uh, zone so I took a total uh, of 45 HA uh, sub exposures 42 s2 exposures and 4203 my length of exposure was 240 seconds. I probably could have run that out to uh, 300 uh, seconds, the way my guiding was performing. So I'm still feeling my way in uh, what I should do for the optimal uh, optimum uh, exposure length. I'll continue to work on that. And as always, I took uh, calibration frames, I do believe that they are key uh, factors in producing a good image. So I took uh, standard 30 darks. I was shooting at, uh, I cooled the camera to minus 10 C, and then I took uh, both flats and dark flats, uh, 20 for each filter. The reason I do that is with the ASI 294mm uh, Pro monochrome camera, it's my understanding bias frames um, are, are not the way, the correct way to go, so you take um, dark flats in lieu of the bias frames. So I figure I had about 8.6 hours of integration time. So night three got canceled. Uh, this is the uh, picture I took the morning... Uh, after night two, so the morning of day three uh, that I was at the site. And what you're seeing here is the smoke had found its way up from the two fires that were burning in Yosemite. And so uh, really, I had kind of wondered if I was going to stay the night or not, if I was going to image the third night. Uh, so this really made the decision for me. And unfortunately, uh, several days after uh, I left, uh, the smoke uh, continues to linger in the area. They still don't have those fires under control. So it's just another thing that we as astronomical imagers have to contend with. You know, weather, smoke, and clearly here in the western United States, forest fires are always, um, unfortunately, a factor in finding uh, clear skies. That's uh, my experience anyway. So um, 
let's take a, lo a look at the result. And uh, let me bring that up. Okay, where are you? So, again, I use Pix Insight, and I want to make a couple of um, qualifications in a sense. I am just working a, a workflow to get me to a reasonable result. What I'm learning about Pix Insight is there are a range of processes and scripts, let's just call them tools, that are available to you to use during image processing. And what I'm learning is that really using these various tools, really it's not about a tool giving you a significant result. It's about putting the proper tools in your workflow that give you incremental improvements so at the end of the day you see a significant improvement in your image. You see that you've been able to tease out even more detail than you might thought might have thought you could uh, tease out. So I'm clearly on the front end uh, I've got a lot of work, but I try to get to a quick and dirty, what I call, image. Because I want to see how good my data is. Now, there's other ways to quantify the data. There's tools within PixInsight to enable me to look at eccentricity and a, a host of factors about the quality of the data I collected. And over time, I'll dig into those more for my own edification and learn how to use them. But this is also a good indicator uh, to me on, on, on how good uh, my data might be. Now, as a beginner, both a second year beginner on uh, data collection, data acquisition, and a first year beginner at Pix Insight, uh, I am pleased with this image as it sits right now. I have more processing that I will apply to this, uh, to the uh, data collection for this uh, elephant trunks uh, nebula. Uh, I'm going to go back through the, the data again and implement additional tools in the process of trying to uh, tease out more detail. I really need to spend some more time with masks. I did use masks on this uh, on this uh, uh, image so uh, you know I need to spend more time in that but I will I will do that. It's going to be a um, incremental learning for me on how to optimize what's in Pix Insight, but it's at least confirmation that the data I'm collecting is not too bad. So I thought I'd share that. But one other thought that came to me, and this is what I find so fascinating and exciting, is this is the elephant's trunk nebula, and what I am capturing here, this light started 2,400 years ago, traveling towards my sensor. So really, we're in a sense, I think, as astronomical imagers, time travelers, we're really looking into the past. You know, what this object looks like today, 2,400 years later, who knows? You know, it's going to take us a while to understand uh, understand that. And that kind of blows my mind in a sense. And, and you know, it's um, another thing that makes this hobby fascinating to me, looking back into the past. And when we think about it, the light from the sun gets to us in, what, about 8.2 seconds or something like that? Yeah. This light here that my sensor has captured has uh, started its journey 2,400 years ago. Now, I don't know how you feel about that, but these are the type of things that excite me about this hobby that, you know, really pique my interest and want me to, you know, make me want to continue to, uh, to peek into the uh, past and, and do more imaging. So, anyway, uh, just thought I'd sh share that. So, um, I do have this in Pix Insight. 
I always am curious about what you see on the screen, uh, what the quality of it looks like in, in the video. Uh, here's the image in PixInsight. I have it rather in Photoshop. Uh, I don't do anything in Photoshop anymore. I do everything in PixInsight. I did um, bring this image into Photoshop because I wanted to reduce the size uh, to post it on a post I made on LinkedIn. And so I used uh, Photoshop to reduce it to the uh, um, maximum side allow maximum side size allowed on uh, LinkedIn. All right. So uh, again, this was the end result of uh, two nights of imaging with my Xenostar 61 Mod 2 and my ASI 294mm Pro monochrome camera using my Antalya. 3 nanometer HA, S2, and O3 filters. Uh, I'm happy with it. A person that really knows how to image processing could probably point out all the flaws. And at some point, I want that feedback. You know, not only please point out the flaws, but tell me which tools within Pix uh, Insight I can do to uh, uh, start to mitigate those flaws. Those flaws. But for me, when I look at this image, I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Uh, and that's what's important to me right now. Uh, I will refine my skills, but it's going to be over a longer period of time. And, uh, but I think this is kind of cool in, in my mind. All right, so uh, let's kind of close this thing down. All right. So, if you haven't seen my other videos, I ordered the Celestron, uh, Celestron Edge HD8. I think I ordered it on the 25th. I've got, I got it yesterday. That was a very quick shipment from OPT. And so I generally like to put a part in this uh, trip recaps about what's next. This is clearly what's next for me is starting to build a procedure to uh, configure all the, the gear and the image train and start to learn how to dial it all in. Uh, that's going to take me some time. While I have the OTA, I'm still waiting for like the reducer and the OAG and the guide camera. So it's going to be several weeks, but clearly I'm going to be focusing some time on this going forward. I will continue to image with my Xenostar uh, Z61 uh, Mod 2 in the interim while I'm uh, trying to sort out how to bring this on to online. I expect I will write a procedure um, and if the procedure is actually written and is something that somebody can follow I'd be happy at some point to put a link to it off my Google Drive where people uh, where people could share it. So. Um, All right. Anyway, I don't know if you're seeing me or not seeing me. I'm nothing much to look at. I was made for radio. All right. Uh, I'm jazzed up. I'm excited. I'm pleased with this image. Uh, I'm super excited about the uh, Edge HD as my uh, next uh, scope challenge. I'm happy I have the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro to help. Um, get some uh, hopefully quality data with the Edge HD and uh, other than that if you like this kind of content please give it a thumbs up as always like share and subscribe I'm weather permitting I'm and smoke permitting in the area uh, I'm gonna go uh, out the night of the 5th of August and uh, try and find a location that I can image from I'm thinking about going to a new dark side up north of Susanville, California that I've not been to before and we'll see what happens but I'll, I'll give an update if that trip uh, actually happens. Other than that, clear skies wherever you may be in the world. Till next time.